there are countless mysteries and wonders within the world. The most baffling of which can only be seen from the sky. These magnificent geoglyphs have been etched onto the surface of our planet for thousands of years. Complex networks of ground markings such as the Nazca Lines etched into the sands of Peru's southern desert. The steppe geoglyphs in Kazakhstan, only discovered in 2007 on Google Earth, revealing approximately 260 geoglyphs of geometric shapes including squares, crosses and circles, ranging in sizes from 295 feet to more than 1300 feet in length. The Sajama Lines of Western Bolivia, thousands of perfectly straight interjecting paths etched into the ground and continuously worked on for more than 3,000 years. A network of paths covering an area of approximately 22,525 square kilometers or 8,700 square miles. These mystifying shapes and designs give us a real glimpse into the ancient societies of our past. Yet, with decades of research and examination, published historians are still unable to explain any logical reasoning or purpose for this reoccurring phenomena. With his open-minded approach and ancient alien philosophy, Eric van Daniken believes the simple answer to be that these geoglyphs are messages to the sky gods. An advanced race of extraterrestrials as described in many ancient religions, as superior beings or being from outside of this world, a non-human entity appearing from the skies. We can prove that in antiquity our forefathers made gigantic signs in the ground, like today's uh, crop circle, just it was done by our forefathers some thousands of years ago. And all these designs are laid out in a way that they are so big, you can see them only from the air. I mean Nazca in Peru is one of the examples, but it's not only Nazca. In the meantime, because of our flying aircraft, because of our helicopters, we found gigantic designs dating from prehistory time in, in Saudi Arabia, in Australia, in today's Jordania, then even here in, in the United States, in California, a, a place called Blight. You see figures in the ground, you can see them only from the air. In Mexico, in the Sonora Desert, there are hundreds of designs which you can see only from the air. And the main mystery is definitely Nazca in Peru. For those who do not yet know, the Nazca Lines are a series of geoglyphs located some 400 kilometers south of the Peruvian capital, Lima, and are believed to have been drawn by the Nazca civilization between 500 and 200 BC. They depict many different animals and creatures, such as a spider, a hummingbird, a monkey, and a strange human-like figure. There are believed to be over 800 straight lines, 300 geometric designs, and 70 animal and plant designs, some of which are up to 370 meters long. I was so many times in Nazca, I made myself over 5,000 pictures of Nazca. I show you here now pictures of Nazca which were never shown on television. And you really are shocked when you see these designs and look at them carefully. Until today, the scientific community has come up with the following information. All these designs on the ground is an astronomical calendar. It made no sense. Then they say it was a cult for the water gods. Another scientist suggested now it was a cult for the mountain gods. I read always in scientific magazines, now it is a cult for agriculture. My God, this is ridiculous. There was never agriculture. It's too hot for it. If 
every, in every time somebody, something was growing there, green, then you would not see the designs anymore. Another suggested now, it's a prehistoric Inca sport place, something like an, a prehistoric Olympia. Others said now, these are copies of Fata Morganas. So the natives somewhere in the air, they have seen some lines, maybe in the clouds. It was a, a starting place for hot air balloon. We know that hot air balloons could have existed in prehistory time in South America. It's theoretically possible, but we have no writing, no written record about it. But even for hot air balloons, you don't need landing strips. Hot air balloon just start on one place. Another one said now, these are acre plots, but acre plots means growing of something. There was never something growing there. Another one said, now these are uh, uh, procession streets, you know, for some religion. It's ridiculous. Streets which started abruptly, ended abruptly, etc. Another one suggested, no, this is a prehistoric map. A map for what? For where? Or a cultural atlas. We have had in the scientific community so many explanations and every scientist thinks this is plausible. That's the next natural explanation. It's all nonsense. Just look at these gigantic lines. This is eye openers. And on television, you never see these pictures. I have 5,000 of them. In Nazca, there you see some mountains which were artificially cut off. You never see these mountains on television. Somebody cut the top of the mountain off. You can clearly prove it in the pictures. Normal mountains around Nazca, they come to the top from both sides. And you see, it's the top of the mountain. Then you see one mountain where the cold top is cut off. And there is a line on this mountain. And under the line, the line looking like an airstrip, starting abruptly, ending abruptly. Under the line is a zigzag line. No idea, no suggestion what this was. I simply suggest, or in this case, I speculate, it has something to do with flying. You see, today we need uh, uh, electromagnetic impulses, for example, to start machines, Mag magnetic. It could be something inside. We have sent a scientific crew to Nazca, and I have asked the scientists a few questions which archaeologists would never ask. Archaeologists ask for datings, for bones, for fireplaces and all these things. I ask, for example, please go to the desert of Nazca with your modern equipment and measure the resistance of electricity. What is the resistance of electricity? If I have a 100 volt and then I have a measure, measuring device and I want to see if the electricity is flowing so I can measure the flow of electricity. And I wanted to know from the scientific world, does the electricity flow in Nazca? Is it the same flowing as in the desert or on these so-called lines? They made their scientific measurements and as expected in the desert, in the sand, there is no flowing electricity because sand is an isolator, like ceramic is an isolator. But then they made the same experience on the lines, on the lines with that cut off mountain, where the zigzag lines around them. And the, 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 the speed of the electrical resistance was 8,000 times higher than just a few meters in the desert. So there is something. I asked the scientists, can you measure magnetic fields in Nazca? Is there something wrong? Of course, there are changements in the magnetic field, and especially on the lines. On that mountain, they found the magnetic field in the ground under the line, which is so high that they could not measure it anymore. So there is something behind it, but nobody knows what it is, and nobody is allowed to go there or make diggings. So we know that something is wrong in Nazca, because we can measure the flow of electricity, the difference in the sand, and the difference in the so-called lines. We can definitely measure the changing of the magnetic field. On the zigzag line, there is something deep down there. But in practice, one would say, okay, so make a hole. 
What's so difficult there? It's not possible. Natska is completely protected. You don't receive the permission to simply scratch a little stone away. If you do something, you are immediately arrested. You get in jail in, in Peru and you have to pay, pay about $10,000 to get out again. So we know by measurement something is wrong in Natska, but in practice we have no possibility to check it. After his lifelong research around ancient civilizations, Eric von Daniken is convinced that the mythology, signs and descriptions given all around the world point towards the same conclusion, close encounters of the fifth kind, a direct communication between humans and a superior alien race. I know from uh, my knowledge of ancient texts, of ancient mythologies, that some thousands of years ago, a gigantic mother spaceship was surrounding around the Earth. Now this mother spaceship, after a long trip, they need something to refuel. I mean, is it organic material? Is it uranium? Is it whatever? So they measure the planet. Where could we find something? Maybe they are looking for gold. And from an orbit, they can measure where we find gold or whatever. Now they simply send an automatic space probe down. An automatic space probe would not need a landing strip. It simply came down like one of our satellites. And before it came to a standstill, it might be that this automatic space probe is blowing away some sand and stones and etc. Becoming before it comes to a standstill. One of the natives was watching this. Something was coming from the guards, from the sky. And this space probe makes some measurements Hello, what is the magnetic field here? Do we find gold, uranium, or whatever? And this appears again. Another native goes to his tribe and say, hey, something was descending from the god. I saw it here on the plain of Nazca. And you see a small line simply made, created by the blown away stone and sand. And other natives may think, obviously the gods want that we make some lines for them. And it becomes a religion, a cult. And the natives now make lines in all kinds of directions. Small lines, large lines, thin lines, long lines. The longest of the small lines in Natska is 23 kilometers long over cross mountain hill straightaway, 23 kilometers. The longest of the airstrip looking lines is 3.8 kilometers long. Enough to land the jumbo jet. Now, that was my suggestion. The lines were made by the natives because it has become a religious cult. But that's not all. The extraterrestrials, in fact, they found something there. Something which they used. We have no idea what it used. And they took it off from Natska. It was the extraterrestrials, not the natives, who cut the mountain because something which they needed was in there. By cutting off the mountain, you have debris. There is nothing in Natska. Where is all this debris which they took off from the cutting mountain? And maybe they had an automatic landing machine and the landing machine was working on a magnetic field. And for the magnetic field, they need that zigzag line under the line because you, with the zigzag line, you uh, uh, compose an electromagnetic field. So it comes to a standstill and you pull it the other way around and you start it again. The local people made with the figures. You see, in the, you have in the ground, you have figures of fishes, spiders, monkeys, birds, and this kind of thing. And these figures were made by the local. You know, Natska is very, very hot. The surface of the desert of Natska is composited of little brown stones and sand. Now you have only to use your shoes and to scratch away these little brown stones and you see itself a higher, bright shining level appears. And with this you can in fact make these figures. There is no mystery in making the figures. You can also make some lines. This is also possible by scratching away with your shoes the surface of it. But the large lines, starting abruptly, ending abruptly, 
the large big lines on mountains which are cut off are not made by scratching away with your shoes. Here technology was used, so you have to differentiate. There was high technology in my eyes from extraterrestrials, which has to do with the cut off mountains, the zigzag lines and these things, and there is imitations of the natives. Even after the extraterrestrials left, when they have received what they wanted, the natives continue to make lines in honors of the God. So you have both there, high technology from extraterrestrials and simply primitive lines made by the natives. If you stand in, in Natska with your foot, you see nothing, you see no difference. You have to stand exactly on a line. Then you see it goes down in, into the ground about four, five centimeters. But you see it only directly standing there. Two meters away, you see no difference. It's all brown, rust, sand, that's all. The natives want to give signs to the gods. One day, the work of the so-called gods was done. They said goodbye, we came back in a few thousand years, goodbye everyone, they disappeared. But the, in, on earth, the natives had the next generation and the next generation, and they were all talking about the gods. And they said, to our grandfather's time, the gods from the sky were here. Which gods? Up there. Then a high priest may come up with a good idea, we must show them signs, the God. We must signalize them. We are still here. We are praying. We are hoping of your return. And now the natives start to make signs in the ground of such an overdimensional size that you can see them only from the air. And again, Natska is not isolated. I know from the Ethiopian book of the king, the Kebra Negest, that King Solomon had a flying machine. In the, in the Kebra Negest, it says that King Solomon had not only flying machines, he had maps, maps from the surface of the earth. He knew exactly on which part is a jungle, on which part is a desert, etc. It might well be that King Solomon, with one of his flying machines, once flew to Natska. In the Hindu mythology, we have the twins called the Maruts. They are described, they had flying machines. They were flying over the planet, visiting different tribes. So King Solomon, the flying Maru Maruts, the twins, were maybe in Natska. And they all created line when they came to a, a, a landing point. And the natives imitated and made lines. And the natives made sign for that. Hey, we are here. We are expect you. We have offerings for you. We have food for you. Please visit us again. Give us your knowledge. That's why the natives made gigantic figures in the ground. In Natska, there is a geometrical figure which is never shown to the tourists. I made a few hundred photos of it. It's gigantic. It's different circles, a big circle, two smaller circles, and around them are triangles and so. And this is geometry, is high geometry. It does not fit to the natives. We don't today, we don't know what the meaning is of it. The tourists are not overflown there. By the way, the tourists today in Natska, this is another thing which I, I hate. The pilots, they fly the tourists over these signs, the fishes, monkeys, birds, etc., but not over the lines and not over the geometrical pattern. And just a few years ago in England, the same design, which I call looks like a mandala, the same design appeared, but this time in England. Now between England and Natska, there are 20,000 miles. In the last few years, in the desert of Jordan, again, gigantic figures were found, only found by the air. It's comparable to Natska, with hundreds of designs, rings, circles, triangles, etc. 
And this mystery goes on worldwide. Always some of the prehistoric people made designs for the gods because you can see them only from there. Since roughly 30 years, we are confronted with the phenomenon which we call crop circles. In the beginning, they were simple, primitive circles. And now it is normal in our society, we look for a reasonable explanation. So we found all kinds of explanations. What could it be? And I read in the scientific literature incredible stupidities how to explain these crop circles. But the pictures on the so-called circles are not circles anymore. They become bigger and bigger and much more complicated. Now we always look for the next plausible, reasonable answer. And one of these reasonable answers were, it must be hoaxes. So, and of course, we found hoaxes. They admitted, how they showed even how they make these circles and things. But the hoaxes are nothing compared to the real gigantic pictures which in the meantime appear of a sudden. And in some cases you can prove it. They appear within a few minutes. They are there. So there's no way out. It's no more hoaxes. The primitive circle, yes, are hoaxes, but not the gigantic pictures. So somebody is obviously trying to give us an information. I suggest that we are visited again in our days by extraterrestrials. They are looking to us. Now, it would be easy with their technology to just show up on a gigantic football stadium. The cameras are there already. But because they know us, we are the offspring of them, they know how our reaction would be. We would be completely shocked. Our religions worldwide would crash down. It would be a catastrophe. And they don't want to shock us. They know our reaction that they do it in another way. Slowly, slowly, they make gigantic pictures in the ground, knowing that humans use and search for the next plausible answers. So we have 20 plausible answers, and then we realize the next plausible answers makes no sense anymore, because these things appear overnight, these things appear within a few minutes. So we have to come up with the question, what is it? Is someone up there who tries to give us an information? Are we too stupid to understand the information? Because we always think, well, it must be wrong. It must be hoaxes. Some of them are hoaxes, but the big complicated designs are not hoaxes anymore. They want that we realize there is something out of humanity, out of this planet. After we have tried to explain everything in a natural way, we have to come to a conclusion there is no more natural answer. There is something behind our knowledge. That's why they do it. UFO sightings are in the meantime worldwide. We have 10,000 of people who saw UFOs and people who are serious, not only hoaxes again. Our security is based on being prepared to meet all threats. There was a time when we depended on coastal forts and artillery batteries because with the weaponry of that day, any attack would have had to come by sea. Well, this is a different world, and our defenses must be based on recognition and awareness of the weaponry possessed by other nations in the nuclear age. We can't afford to believe that we will never be threatened. There have been two world wars in my lifetime. We didn't start them, and indeed did everything we could to avoid being drawn into them. But we were ill-prepared for both. Had we been better prepared, peace might have been preserved.
In antiquity, the gods were here. The humans worshipped the gods. The humans said to the gods, we want to make a construction, a temple, something in your honor, so that our ancestors later, thousands of years ago, may understand that you were here. And the gods said, yes, make it, but make it only on this place and in this place. So the humans made these structures. Today is different. Today we have no high culture. There are no humans which adore some gods and say, in your honor, we want to make a gigantic structure. The time is different. In uh, Africa, there is a tribe called the Dogon. And the Dogon, they say they were visited by beings from the star uh, solar system of Sirius. The humans asked the gods, where do you come from? And they gave names, but the names mean nothing to us. The names are the names of them. To us, it's a word which has no meaning in, in, on the firmament. So we don't know where they came from and we don't know where they went. Definitely they went back and they promised to return. They are back again. The Dogon have demonstrated a deep understanding of the celestial universe. Knowledge of astronomical events and planetary movements passed down by the NOMO, a group of beings that come from the Sirius star system. The Dogon claim that the NOMO came to the Earth in a visible star in the sky, a description that sounds similar to that of light phenomena and UFO sightings reported around the world. This fascinating tribe revealed knowledge of Saturn and its rings, the planet Jupiter and its four moons, and the Dogon star, an orbiting star deep within stellar space. This was confirmed in the 1950s at the United States Naval Observatory in Washington DC. Is this yet another example of historically documented encounters with an advanced race of beings from the stars? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. More mysteriously, they also claim to have knowledge of an invisible star and its movements throughout the heavens. Many researchers believe this to be the planet Nibiru, as mentioned in Zachariah Sitchin's translations of the Sumerian tablets, theorizing that when the celestial orbits are closest to the Earth, the Anunnaki planet hop from Nibiru Originally genetically modifying primitive human DNA, the engineers of humanity as we know it. Eric Van Daniken and Satchariah Sitchin are of a similar mind in this theological conclusion. Extraterrestrials created the first humans, symbolically Adam and Eve. They again made children, and they children made again children, they multiply and multiply. And in these generations, there was only one language. Adam and Eve, they came directly from the tribe of the apes. The apes had no language. Now, Adam and Eve in the, in the legend were put into a place called paradise where they learned the language. Adam was the first man who was able to speak. He had what we call Broca's center to formal words. Now, Adam was the one who gave to everything a name. Adam was the inventor that this is called a bush. This is called a river. This is called grass. Grass is not the same thing as water. Water is not the same thing as the sky. When you want to talk together, you have to, to have definition, the meaning of the object. That's why Adam started the old language. I suggest 
the first language which the humans had was the language of the extraterrestrials. This you can still read in the Bible before the Tower of Babel. It says, and everyone had the same language at that time. Later, the human society separated. They started to travel and they started to develop their own languages. The first language of the humans was the language of the extraterrestrials. Adam learned it from the extraterrestrials and Adam gave everything the name. Later they separated and they developed other languages. I live in a small country, Switzerland, in the Alps. And only in Switzerland, we have 23 different dialects because every society creates its own world. If they use technology, the gods, they would give a gigantic sign in the sky. They would show something big that everyone can see us. For example, they could show with a laser a sign on the moon. We have full moon and we have empty moon. Now there's nothing and an empty moon and all of a sudden you see a gigantic inscription on the moon. This would be technology. But on the other hand, I'm sure the information is within us, is in our genes. And we continue to give this information to the next generation. And our genetics will find out that we are not only humans. We have been influenced by an artificial mutation by extraterrestrials. So we will find the answers anyhow. It makes no sense to be against all this hypothesis of an extraterrestrial visit in the past because everything points to it. And the final answer is in us and our genetics will find it. I'm Eric von Däniken. Join me next time on Beyond the Legends. To see more of the series Beyond the Legend with Eric von Daniken and many other great Gaia originals, check out the links in the video description below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. It's free and really does help us out.